Hi, and thanks for joining us for another episode of Sealed for Good. I'm your host, Shandy, and today we're going to continue to cover some of the changes of the latest version of AS3740. As we mentioned in the previous episode, it is important that you do reference the current version of the National Construction Code, which is available for download on the ABCB website. In today's episode, we're going to be focusing on surface falls as it does represent some of the biggest changes to this new version of the standard. And it really is a rethink and redefining of waterproofing design and installation requirements. So let's get straight into it with a passage from Appendix B regarding surface falls. The primary consideration for falls in floor finishes is to ensure water does not remain on the finished floor in a manner that can adversely affect health and the amenity of the occupants or deteriorate building elements. In other words, using falls to prevent water ponding on the surface, which is also defined under Appendix B as, when conditions are suitable for drying and all other associated area have dried, any remaining accumulation of water is deemed ponding. Water retained by surface tension alone should evaporate within five hours when local atmospheric conditions are 21 degrees Celsius and 50% relative humidity. To understand how the standard specifically addresses falls, we need to turn to page eight of the standard. The requirement and the scope for falls are detailed under three categories, ranked on the criticality for drainage. For example, Category 1 relates to falls in shower floor finishes. This is considered the most critical area and the fall of minimum 1 in 80 is required. Requirements for Category 2 and Category 3 areas are listed respectively. So how has this changed from the previous standard? The change relates specifically to the falls relative to the waterproofing system as defined under point 2.3.1 where it states where a floor waste is required in a wet area the membrane shall be applied to a substrate with a minimum of 1 in 100 fall towards the floor waste. So using the previous detail from AS 37 2010 it wasn't uncommon to see a membrane being applied in a shower over a surface without gradients or any falls built in towards drainage. Now the membrane would need to be applied over a surface with a fall. Waterproofing over the screen can be considered best practice, but it's not mandatory. So what are the advantages or positives of the new requirement? Having a floor waste in a flat, ungraded fall is not best practice, as it simply increases the chance of sub-tile, sub moisture even more so when a membrane has not been installed over the screen. So this new directive can be seen as a logical step in reducing common risk. Those associated risks with ungraded surfaces include tile delamination and drumminess, screen absorption and deterioration, mold buildup, effervescence development and migration, added strain and early deterioration of the waterproofing membrane system, so now let's explore the relationship between falls and membrane placement a little further to show where the challenges may arise and where things may get confusing. The extent of the membrane application under the latest version of AS3740 is still governed by enclosed versus unenclosed showers. If we take a type 2 unenclosed shower, the requirement is that the membrane needs to extend 1500 millimeters out from the shower rows. Therefore, that entire 1500 millimeter arc needs to have falls towards drainage. This may present a challenge for screed requirements in the shower versus outside the shower area, particularly if there are multiple wastes in that floor area. The new standard also includes provisions for single drain wet areas with single directional falls terminating at linear drains. So with the new amendments to the standard, what changes might we see from a waterproofing installation viewpoint? We may see a reduction in the scope of waterproofing requirements where the extent of the waterproofing is reduced. For example, seeing more enclosed showers. 
We may no longer see builders include voluntary waste as more work is involved to ensure falls or building substrates outside category one areas with falls. Increase in the scope for waterproofing to unenclosed showers. So provisions for entire floor screening and waterproofing. And we may also see an increase in waterproofing applications applied over screen beds. So how about the considerations for builders and architects? There's likely going to be a greater emphasis on bathroom designs to meet requirements of the standard. For example, finish heights at doorways, tile dimensions, bigger tiles will mean greater control of the gradients. Understanding how the type of shower design will impact and determine falls. Practicality of placement of drainage relative to the shower and general bathroom designs. Scheduling of screening and waterproofing works if needed to generate falls. Practical inclusions of voluntary drainage when considering requirements for falls. Screed design, bringing screed engineered mixes into the spotlight for consistency to avoid common issues associated with site mixes. For example, mechanically weak, high sand to low cement ratios, high water ratio, highly absorbent, friable, and prone to cracking and dusting. Remember that what we're covering over these episodes is really just a snapshot and the major changes to the new version of the standard. We highly recommend that you all jump on to the Standard Australia website and purchase a copy of AS 3740 2021 so you have a reference in its whole entirety. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Sealed for Good. We hope you found it informative. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And here's a little extract of a testimonial from our latest session of GAP training. Until then, happy waterproofing. Just to better familiarise ourselves with the waterproofing systems, yeah. mainly offset by Gripset and how they work with the standards. And... Really uh, expand my knowledge in waterproofing to give my apprentice more knowledge too. Better understanding of how to use the sheets. We look a bit more professional towards the builders, um, offering the workmanship warranty. Get a better insight into waterproofing in general. So yeah, as a builder, I think that's something uh, we tend to neglect. And uh, just to get a better understanding of what to use, how to use, and 